Merry Christmas, everyone, from us three Santa Clauses. Uh, this is a pitch episode that's strictly going to be covering Friday night's games. Um, the end of the regular season, it's all about the playoff push now. Uh, so we're going to kind of go through some things, some of the big games on Friday night. Um who we think could be in line for some of the awards, because as you know, awards come out at the end of the regular season now. And what was the other thing we are going to talk about? Uh, playoffs, awards, and some of the games. Yeah, some of the, oh, playoffs, that was the other thing, yeah. So we'll talk about who we think could, you know, who we foresee making the playoffs, because we'll know by the end of Friday night. So, Ty, I'm going to let you begin. We're going to talk about some of the games first. Okay. Okay. So Santa won. Santa won. Uh, which conference? Give me a conference. Uh, well, let's start from the beginning of the night. Like, Cobras and Rapids are going to oh, kick them okay. off the night. That's okay. kind of the big one. Cobras, Rapids. Uh, it won't be as big. Actually, you know, screw that. It might be as interesting. Who's going to pitch, Kale? For you or for, for us? For you. Oh, Vermilia. Oh, well, okay. okay. Um, I think it'll. It's it's a toss-up game because... I, I'm injured, so I'm not going to pitch at all. I mean, my knee is still messed up. Uh, so there'll be a new pitcher, possibly Mikey Jordan, for the Rapids. Um, we'll see the two new rookies that I signed, see how their potential turns out to be. Uh, it's obviously a rivalry game, so um, yeah, it'll be interesting nonetheless. It's the opening game. It'll be, it'll be cool. Who's going to win that one? Cobras. Cobras. Blow up. Mm. It depends on how well Vermilia does, but I think with Ty out for the Rapids, I don't think that they have what it takes as like in the pitching game to keep up with the Cobras. That's yeah. my personal opinion. One thing that's going to be kind of funny about that game is uh, that game is being broadcast on Facebook and Brock's doing like the play-by-play and stuff, but Michael Sullivan is going <laughs> to be a guest like analyst for that yeah commentator for that one which will be super kind of probably awkward a little bit yeah it'll be be kind of good to see what he has to say about it yeah you know it's you know it's a good thing bring up too though the last time we played in uh conditions where it was snowy and muddy the unspeakable happened true so you know you never know when it's true under conditions like it's going to be it's it's a completely different game well, let's so talk about let's talk about those conditions for a minute. Okay. Um, do you want it to snow, Ty? Oh yeah, heck yeah! I want it to snow under the lights, frigid cold, mud. <laughs> Man, maybe not mud, but <laughs> yeah, I definitely want it to snow. Tony? Heck no! I gotta sit through it. <laughs> I'm not playing, so yeah. I want it no. to snow because yeah. that's fun. It is fun. Um, Ty, do you think that that weather has an effect on? You're a pitcher. You pitched in the snow before, because you can't like bundle up the same way. Because then you like you won't be able to throw. Like you'll be yeah. too. It's not the um, like the cold that, that gets you. It's the mud that you're standing on, right. and it's dark, so it's hard to see. And the ball gets all muddy and wet. Which Colton Titus, not Colton. Eric had the towel. I could see a lot of pitchers bringing that next. For this upcoming one, but uh, it's just it's just a lot harder. It's a different game. Yeah, and you said it will be dark, um, and it will be. But we are going to have a fantastic like lights set up for this thing. Scott Coleman's like in charge of the yeah. whole thing. Shout and out to Scott. He's talking about putting up like we just kind of said do your thing because he's talking about putting up poles and like lights attached to the poles and having it shine down and uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty lit up. I, I it'll imagine. be lit. It'll be uh, it'll, it'll be, be lit. You'll be able Bye. to see. I think you'll be able to see pretty clearly. Uh, anyway, um, the other big game, obviously, at the end of the whole thing, um, yeah. is going to be Bambino's Express. Yeah, we've all been looking forward to this one. Yeah, um, I think we're the three commentators for it too. Yeah, I think, I think I set that up. I was like, yeah. oh, we're going to do this one. Yeah, no other guest commentators. Probably like um, that Brock in, too. Yeah, maybe he'll be. Um, but anyway, who do you think is going to win? You know, I say the Express. <clears throat> okay. Who, who do you Me? Yeah, probably. I think Express. 
Okay. I think the band Venus. Okay. I think they have collectively more talent. Okay. It'll be an um, interesting game, though. Who do you think they're going to pitch? They'll both be in there. Huh? Who do you think those teams are going to throw in that game? Like, I think the Express are going to throw Kyle. Well, yes. Of course. I think Brian Witten should throw Colton Titus, and I think he will, because Colton's just a more consistent pitcher. But I don't know. I think the Express will throw Sullivan the first two games and completely save Kyle for the last game. See, I could see him throwing. I think they will definitely start with Kyle in that Bambino's game, but I could honestly see him switching about halfway through just to look at something different. I don't depending think that on how would well be the he smartest does. move. Oh. Kale knows. <laughs> Sullivan takes a little bit of time to like. I don't know. Like when he begins. Oh, I thought like, you meant because of closing the game. Oh no, no, that's a different story. <laughs> but I would throw Kyle as much as you can. Okay. Let's talk about the standings a little bit, because that's what this whole night's going to be about. We've played half the season. Now this is the back half of the season. Everyone's in slotted positions now, standings-wise. They know what they have to do to get in. Um, we've got the standings here on the screen, <clears throat> too, National and American Conference. Ty, who in the National Conference do you think that's in that four through six could sneak up and get in? Um. I think the only team that is even possible of doing that is the Rapids. I don't think the Anaheim Storm will win a game. They'll have Tyler Hudson back for Friday night. But, you know, they probably have <laughs> to go like... I doesn't seem thrilled about that. <laughs> I don't think the Storm and the Underdogs are good enough to pull off enough wins. And I think the Rapids... Have, an, have enough potential, not that I think they will, like I wouldn't bet on it, but they have enough potential to get in a third spot. Tony, is 2-4 and going to be good enough potentially to get in the playoffs in the National Conference? 2-4 and four record. You know, I think it might. Okay, and who Just, would it be? I, I think it might. It's going to be between the Waves and the Rapids. And they play head-to-head. Yeah. So. So I think that game, the waves. And that's the last. Their last games. I think the Waves Rapids game is going to be, the, kind of the final push to see who. Winner is in, get, losers out. Yeah. Okay. That's my. Because who do the who do the Waves have? Uh, Bison. Uh, Ooh, that's a that's, um, that's not an easy game. No, Bison. Uh, Rapids. Rapid. Uh, Bison Storm Rapids. I think. Okay. So say the Waves beat the Storm. Rapids beat the underdogs. They're both two and two and three, and then whoever wins that game gets their spot. Mm -hmm. Are the Bison safe? We need the we need the. Bison. Uh, in my opinion, no. No. Because they have a tough schedule. Yeah, because they're playing a tough schedule this second this back half, and yeah, they played really well, but they didn't play the best teams in the first half. And I know that uh, little Titus, he's a he's a good little pitcher, but he's really all they have. So if he gets burnt out or struggles, yeah, it's going to be a long road. Yeah. So I think I don't want to say that they'll drop out because I don't necessarily think they will, but I do think it's a possibility depending on how the day goes. I'm interested to see how the Bison's bats hold up against like some good pitching. Yeah. Who of the two bottom teams right there? underdogs and storm who has the better chance of by the end of the night being like oh my gosh they could actually maybe get in this like come all the way back from the bottom and get in uh, between those two what do you think i, I think mean, underdogs all right ty i know you have a different opinion on this one between the underdogs and storm yeah did you uh, you think it's the underdogs uh, who did the storm play um, I uh, can't remember. It all depends on who has an easier schedule. Uh, they play the Waves, uh, Underdogs, and Cobras. Uh, yeah, I'm going Underdogs. That's a hard schedule. That's two losses already. That's true. All right, let's go to the other conference now. Um, 
Are the Wrecking Crew safe at number three? Is it going to be those three and really Friday night's just a determination of who's going to be slotted one, two, three in the playoffs? Or is one of them not so safe? Probably the Wrecking Crew, if any of them. Uh, I think a little bit of both, possibly. I think they're safe because the Fog have kind of been a disaster this past season, Season, really. I mean... Yeah. Like, you know, that's just they got the new is. ownership, and really, they're just trying to get through this. They're just riding it out, so it's not their fault. Um, the Mafia, we all know, is kind of not lived up to their potential. And, that's an uh, understatement. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lynx also have been, they're kind of in the rebuilding mode. So I don't think that they're going to drop below any of those three teams, but <clears throat> they still have to play well. I don't think any of those three can be touched. I think that's the three you're going to get for the yeah. American. And I'm fine with that. Those yeah. are three good teams. Three teams I think can contend oh, yeah. for a championship. Um, Ty, if the Wrecking Crew were to move up from number three, who of those two teams, Bambinos or Express, do you think is more likely to move down? The they Ex- play the. They lost the Bambinos already head to head. Yeah. And they played the Express head to head first game of. Yeah, that's why I would say the Express. If they beat the Express, and then say like the Express lose the Bambinos also, then they can move up. I don't see the Bambinos not getting number one. Even if the Express beat them head to head, or you don't think that's gonna happen at all? I don't think that's gonna happen. You think they're that much better? I think they're. I don't know. I mean, either team could win, but I think that. Yeah, I think they're. All right. I mean, you never know. All right. Um. Who of the you know bottom? what's funny, though, is collectively, the National Conference has, like, it used to be, like, American Conference, National Conference. Now it's kind of, like, leveling yeah, out. Yeah, I told you guys it would do that eventually, and yeah. no one believed me. Because, like, the three teams in the American Conference are awful. And there's four teams in the National Conference that are decent. I don't think the like, Lynx are that like, awful. I really don't. It's, oh, and they're, they're going to get Heinzman back, too. As of right now, from what we've seen, they are awful. I don't think they're awful. They're 0 3, but I don't think they're awful. Like, I think they're going to finish the season. Let's see. They get a play. I forget who they get a play, but they're not going to go winless. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on to the awards. Okay. Tony, who right now, when we came out with that uh, MVP race thing, like right after mm-hmm. the November 12th games, we had Kyle number one. And, like, going into this, he's probably still number one, but is he the favorite? Because things have changed. They got Sullivan now, <laughs> which means Kyle's probably not going to throw as many innings. You know, teams that have, like, two really good players, they, like, take attention mm-hmm. away from the other mm-hmm. one. I think – I don't know that he'll necessarily lose the MVP, Kyle, will, but I think it opens the door for some, in my opinion, some of the Bambinos players. From their pitching, the way that just the way that they kind of carry themselves, even when they play the Express, because they beat the Express, so that says a lot. And so, do I think Kyle will lose it? No, but I think it will. I think people will have a more open mind when thinking about other teams and other players for this position. Ty, do you think that the winner, the pitching winner? Like, whoever pitches the game between the Express and the Bambinos, the winner will get the MVP. I think that's true if the Express beat the Wrecking Crew. <laughs> if not, then I think Colton will get it for the Bambinos. Colton saved the game against the Wrecking Crew. He had a walk-off home run. We never talk about that. Yeah. Now, here's something interesting. What if the Express beat the Bambinos? Okay. But Sullivan pitches two of the three games on the on Friday, and the Cobras go six and zero, oh, and Vermilia has pitched every game but one for them. The one being like the one I pitched against the underdogs, or maybe he he pitches two out of three on Friday, and so he pitches four of the six basically. But they go six and zero, oh, and he's clearly the best player on the Cobras. Does okay. he okay. sneak up into hold, that? Hold on. You're saying the Cobras go 6-0, and Vermilion oh, pitches every game except one. And who loses in the American Conference? Um, Express beat 
Bambinos, but Kyle only pitches one game that night, that game. And Sullivan pitches the others. So it kind of draws a little attention. Sullivan pitches against Is Vermilia then the favorite to win MVP? No. I got if if they go six and oh, Kyle's Kyle's MVP. And he beats the Bambinos. I mean, come on. Same thoughts? Yeah, I think well, this is kind of bad because it's only supposed to be for a tournament, but Kyle's also proven himself more than Vermelius. This is his first tournament, or his first season, I should say. But if he keeps it up, he'll definitely be in that talk. But I Harder think, schedule, too. Yeah, I just don't think he can take that away from Kyle. So if either the Bambinos or the Express go undefeated, the MVP is going to one of those guys. Like, there's no other team that could get it. Like, say, what if... Bison come out and shock the world again, go 3-0, finish season 6-0, and and Titus, clearly the best player on that team. I might give It'll Titus talk, the yeah. MVP if they go 6-0, and simply because Titus is carrying that team yeah. on his shoulders. I agree. Like, single-handedly. Okay. Now, here's an interesting one we haven't talked about very much, um, and we're running out of time, so this will be the last thing. There's other awards, as you guys know, that we can't touch all of them, though. The Outstanding Manager Award. We haven't talked about this at all, really. Mm-mm. Who would be your favorite right now? And who do, you, who do you foresee probably winning that? Is it Frenchie? You know, he was the first one that came to mind just because he got Titus. I'm looking at the turnaround. Yeah, but they're always... going to have Screen, too. And I imagine Screen's going to have a good night on Friday hitting. This is... Yeah, I... <laughs> All the awards come after this tournament. Yes. Okay. We're going to do um, a recap show of Friday night's action on the next morning, Christmas Eve morning. We're going to film it live on Facebook. And then December 26th, the day after Christmas, Monday, we're going to film a live award show where we're going to go through all of them. So there's that. But anyway, back to what we were Is doing. it manager or owner? It's anything in, okay. in management. Be it owner, general manager. It's hard. It's hard because yes, Frenchie has completely 180 the Bison. Mm-hmm. It will determine how well they do in this upcoming tournament because they, they have a hard schedule. But Garrett Blaine has that's got a big trade. That's a it pays huge. Off. Garrett has made the Express a place where players want to go. It's untouchable almost. Yeah, other than the Bambinos, it's an untouchable. I mean, Brian <laughs> Brian's obviously one one of the. He's up there too, but he he hasn't done it. He, it's just been consistent. He hasn't done anything this yeah. season. Not that he even has to, but that is a huge trade from Garrett. So it's I think. What it's about on Garrett. the other side though? Like, what if it? What if getting Vermilia and maybe Vermilia ends up winning like MVP or something like that, and Sean plays well, and the Drew's trust in what he was doing. Drew Deluki, the owner of the Cobra's trust in what he was doing, pays off. For him in that regard, maybe they like express lose a game. Then does Drew look really good for that award on the mm. other side of it? I think he'll look good. I don't think it's the best. Okay. What were you saying about the express or untouchable? What did you mean by that? Well, just that no one other than the Bambinos, before the Bambinos came in the league, literally untouchable. Okay. I mean, just as a franchise, you couldn't. You couldn't beat them. You couldn't no, stay with them. You right. couldn't. I mean, it was just they were at a whole new level, yeah. and they still kind of are. Them and the Bambinos still seem to be on kind of a different level than everybody else. Yeah. Don't you agree, though? I mean, for the Bison, they went from the worst team in the league to it's, the, I, I would uh, say to so, so long as the Bison make the playoffs and don't just like barely squeak and grab onto the playoffs because they did really well and. The last one, and they go like one and two. Like if they make the playoffs and they are clearly a legit playoff team, I think James is going to have my vote. Yeah, and we're the voters, us four and Brock. Yeah. So I think what it's a- it's definitely James's award to lose. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. But the other one I wanted to throw in there was what about Aaron Deister and the Wrecking Crew? If because Coleman was the other one I was going to bring up for MVP. Mm-hmm. If they beat. Um, the Express behind Coleman, and Coleman pitches like all the games Friday night, and they one up the Express of the Bambinos, getting into that two slot. Is he potentially in the MVP talk? It's possible. If they go three and zero, and Coleman pitches, and they beat the Express, I would, 
I my vote would go to Coleman. Really? Yeah. It just all depends on what happens. I mean, there's, there's no way so many to factors. Yeah, there's no way to right. even think about it now. And then my last thing was going to be if that kind of thing played out, would Aaron Deister maybe become the you know the favorite mm. for that award? Because think of the way he went out and got Coleman. Because that's what's impressive to me. He like looked it up somehow on the internet, found this guy that none of us had ever heard about, yeah. paid off. They watched him do like a tryout. But that's impressive to me. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna finish it with this. We're gonna go through each award, and we're gonna choose who we think will get it as of right now. MVP, Kyle. 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 As of now. No, I mean, like, what you think will happen in the next tournament, too. So, so you're like, like your prediction. Including everything. Yeah, your prediction. Including everything? Prediction. It's a better word. Yeah, I still think it's Kyle. Kyle? Kyle? Okay. Fielding. Uh. Uh. I don't, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Tierney? I have no idea. Okay. I haven't seen. Tough one. That's a really no, tough yeah, one. Yeah. GM. You mean that? Oh, no, yeah. You want to talk about uh, French. You're right now, it's going to Frenchie. Okay. Rookie of the year. Oof. Coleman. Titus. Okay. That's a hard one, because there's Coleman, Titus, Vermilia. I, I think he just passes the eye test better. All right. Um, what, what other words? Uh, batting, Marcus batting. Deo. Yeah. I don't know what else there is. Um, the, the All-Stars, we won't get into okay. that. Okay, yeah. So, the, uh, closing question, though, and I'm going to hit the button right after. Is anyone who missed... A, um, like, Sullivan wasn't, you know, he was out for the first half of the season. Tyler Hudson, you know, out. Lucas Myers, like, there were some players that were out and mm-hmm. are only going to get half the season mm-hmm. in. Can any of them win a major award still, or are they kind of out of it now because of that? Because I think they could still be in the All-Stars, like, easily. You could, they could still be All-Stars. But in terms of, like, winning a batting crown, having played only half the season, eh, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I think, think you so, could be yeah. all-star team, yeah. but I don't think you're going to get any awards. You got to show up. Yeah. All right. That's it.